Who is Moshe? He is unique. He is not influenced by the mass. What is his life role? To carry on sowing. What does it mean to sow? It means to believe. To sow with love is to believe in love. In other words, who is Moshe? Moshe sees the Jewish people on countless occasions, countless occasions, going against the will of God. On countless occasions he sees them doing what is not exactly right. Every time he takes their side. He tells Hashem, wait, stop. You can't kill them, you can't destroy them like you wanted to do after they didn't go want to go into the land of Israel or because of the golden calf or whatever thing. He stop. Why? Because I'm here. Who are you? I believe. What do you believe in? Hashem says, leave me alone and I will destroy them all after the golden calf. Moshe says, if Hashem tells me leave him so he can destroy them all, it depends on me. I won't leave him. I'll drive him mad. Because I believe in what? I believe in God. What does it mean to believe in God? It believes in the 13 attributes of God, in order to believe in the power of compassion. Moshe is at a level to believe. What does it mean to believe? It means to join. To join the truth of God with the soul of man. In other words, you believe in God by believing in the child of Israel, by believing in the human being who has gone astray. You believe in him. When you stop believing in that person, and you give him a name, thief, uh, rapist, whatever crime he may have committed, you have given him a name. That name means that's what he is. But Moshe was never supposed to be like that. The guy who stole, stole in a moment of weakness. Stole because he didn't have the strength to overcome whatever Yetzirah he may have. Moshe's role, therefore, was to sow in love. Was to believe the guy could return to believe in his soul despite the external appearance. In other words, who is Moshe? He sows in love throughout his life. And on one occasion he flipped it. Once he flipped out. And because of that, because he didn't believe in me. Pretty harsh. So now we have understood that by where Mo Moshe's foot fell falling, what his level was, through the, if you want to call it the sin, the failure of Moshe, we understand what his level was. His level was never to be influenced by what's going on. Always to be influenced by that belief, that imagination that the other guy was built beautiful. He was built angelic. He was created in the image of God and therefore he could be brought back. So he could always sow in love. And once he flipped out. And because he flipped out once. Because he didn't believe in me. And because of that reason. You go and go into Israel. Pretty harsh. So now we see. That there's something not logical here. We know that Moshe pleads to go into the land of Israel. About Hanan. And the Midrash and the Agadah goes about it. I suffered for 40 years. I went with the Jewish people. They drove me crackpots and I suffered everything they suffered for. And now when they go to the land of Israel, what? I can't have a part of that. I went through all the suffering with them. I went through all the hell with them. I went through all the difficulties with them. And now when they come to the prize, now it comes to the good things. They go to the land of Israel. That I can't have. And he begs Hashem like this. Hashem, no, doesn't listen. Right, Hanan. And I pleaded and pleaded with nothing doing. You know, if anybody would say, is there for our Lord of this Haro? This is what he did and this is his reward. I'm just. I was, when you see that there is a lot of imbalance in the world, it's because of a lack of gratitude. Moshe can't plead for himself. Moshe can plead for others. Others have to recognize it and plead for Moshe. The other should have said, okay, he didn't want to go in the land of Israel by himself when he could have done it. He didn't want to take the credit for himself. He suffered for us. Now we reciprocate. We're one. He didn't go in without us. We're not going in without him. 